Today we are talking to Derek Vidal, a founder at Social Bamboo, and also you can be able to find him with socials at Social Bamboo, host of the Social Bamboo podcast with over a million downloads. So really excited to be able to talk to Derek about how you can be able to jump into the advertising world and use social media advertising to really propel your business, but to be able to know also what you should do to be able to position you to scale on these platforms. Yeah, Derek, excited for you to, to be able to join the show. Uh, and uh, like, like we were talking about earlier, one of your big passions is really to helping uh, businesses, small to medium businesses, to be able to jump on social media advertising for their first time. And uh, actually, before we get into that, what is like some of the most common misbeliefs that you've seen people before they make that leap? Or what, what, what do they need to know before they do make that leap? Yeah, so of this stuff is that people have getting started with Facebook and Instagram ads. And now I'll probably just start saying Facebook ads for the rest of the podcast. I mean, Facebook and Instagram ads every single time you run them from the same spot. Uh, but I've had enough people like, I don't think I want, want to be on Facebook. Oh yeah. I'm just, I'm calling it Facebook ads, but I, I mean, Instagram the same. Uh, so one is that the ads manager is really complex and it definitely is. It is weird when you first get back there, the first, all the term and uh, just all, all the things that you could potentially click is mind boggling. Um, I've done it enough times now. I've been ad to so many different businesses, including international businesses that I'll be looking at like Italian or French while I'm running the ads, but all the buttons are in the same spot. So I can still on those, those systems. There is a point at which you say, oh, I totally get this now. And it all of a sudden you're like, maybe this is like the best way they could set it up, but they definitely don't make it that user friendly on the back end uh, to run ads properly. And what I mean by that is when you get into ads manager, the easiest way to create them is they did try to make a simplified version of the ads for businesses that were struggling to get the technology set up is that they started giving people all these automatic ones. Uh, do you want to do the targeting yourself or you want us to do it? Do you want to uh, you know, want us to automate the budget amongst all of your ads other than you choosing the individual budgets and just a bunch of different options that just kind of, they take away the power. And they their, their goal is to get you sales. However, uh, it's very hard for them to, it's a lot more costly for them to show your ad to a ton of people and then see how a ton of people react and then figure it out themselves over time versus you just kind of knowing how to do ads and, and tell them who you're looking for to put in the exact specifications um, and promoting a post would be an example of when you're giving them the most control to do with your money. So a lot of people feel like promoting or boosting a post on Instagram or Facebook is going to do something for them. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not going to do anything besides get you followers. You can definitely boost a post to gain followers, but uh, there are way less um, you know, options that you do need to choose. Like if you're ever trying to get sales, like unless you tell Facebook and Instagram, your objective of the ad is sales. They're not, not going to show it to people who are in the market to buy your product. They're just going to show it to random people that are really cheap to advertise to often are in like countries that you don't even ship to. Like they're just trying to get you the lowest cost or like, like basically. So unless you're trying to get likes and follows, you don't want to do any kind of promoting or boosting posts because it's not going to work. Uh, to, to say it in short, I could give you a 20 minute answer. I have an entire like 30 minute podcast of why it's not going to work if you're trying to get sales. Um, but event, it is something that you can figure out once you get with your first ad campaign, it all makes a lot more sense. So I would just say, be confident that it, just be aware that it, it should, um, you know, mess with you at first, but it's kind of like when you get to like a new college campus, like the, your first day of college and you look around, you're like, there's no way I'll ever figure out all these buildings. And then after a couple of weeks, even you, you got, got the campus down it, once you navigate it, um, it's not that hard. And then the other myth is that they're just too expensive. And this has been true in ways, but whenever that narrative is being propelled, it gets so many people out of the space that it eventually becomes not true anymore. So this is really how you catch trends is if you hear 
something like Facebook and Instagram ads are too expensive. And now iOS 14 has made it really hard for businesses to still run their ads and uh, get their targeting down and run them profitably. And you hear all of these ads are leaving the space. The average person will hear, hear that and be like, oh, leave the space? Got it. Like the whole thing is an auction system. It's based based off of how many other advertisers there are. So when you hear people leaving the space, all that means is it's getting cheaper. It doesn't mean people aren't on Facebook and Instagram anymore. That if your customers are there, like end of story, it's not a matter of, well, don't buy from Instagram. Like people buy if they see your product and it solves a problem and you catch them at the right time. And Facebook and Instagram are really good at catching people uh, at the rhyme. Uh, with how their ad system work. Um, I actually looked into it just to see if there's like metrics to back this up. I'm like, I feel like, like after I was running some ads with some companies, getting such good results, I was like, these results could only be possible by way less advertisers in the market. So if you type Google, Facebook ads cost, and then what is the website called? It is on the tip of my tongue. Um, maybe. Maybe it'll come to me in a second. It's usually like the first one, Facebook ads cost. Um, it, you click on that and it is live chart that you can look at average cost per lead, average cost per sale, average cost per thousand impressions, Facebook versus Instagram on stories versus regular posts. And you can just look at, at all of them. And I made a reel about this too, but they were just down pretty much across the board um, in like every category, Facebook and Instagram, just all down versus last year. So a lot of advertisers have left really good opportunity to strike. Um, but I will say that for the last myth here would be that uh, you can put together a basic copy and basic image and expect it to work. Um, it is It does require a, a, a thinking than what most people put into their first ad campaign. And of course, you know, you, sometimes you have to fail in that first one to even know what to do in the second one. So I do think even when you run money on Facebook or Instagram is unprofitably the data that it gives you of like that audience doesn't work. Amazing. Amazing. That, that, that audience doesn't work. I'll pay any amount of money to stop, you know, putting my focus on some people that I thought were my customers. So the data is really good, even when it's like not profitable. Um, but know that it's not as simple at like, if you're just creating a single image and you're not going to run any split tests with like, let me run this caption versus this caption versus this one versus this one. Let me run four different different caption and ways of selling it. Let me do five different images and then I'll alter that with every variation of the caption and try to find like the winning one and to all these different audiences to test them all. If you're testing a lot, um, you're not going to be able to find like where the profit is unless you guess right the first time. Um, but rarely do, do uh, us as marketers have our first guess be on all fronts. So you ultimately do want to create multiple different ad angles. And this is where some people can get confused because they're like, I don't know how to make all these different ways to sell my product. So that that's where my company comes in is really helping people navigate that part. Yeah, making images is a, I think that's a great practice, especially when you're first starting uh, because it's, uh, uh, from my experience, anchor, an video is going to anchor your performance. Uh, uh, but that also could be, it's going to anchor your performance bad because video is so much more complex. Uh, that it is really easy to make a bad video. Yeah. <laughs> Where images are more of a safety net. It's uh, more difficult to make a bad image. Absolutely. Cool. So when somebody's starting out, say making five images, uh, or and, and just going into images in, in themselves, is there any place that uh, you recommend uh, for them to uh, – do some research to get some preparation so they know what they're doing uh, rather than just making a uh, uh, an image off of a paint file? Yeah. yeah. Do you mean as far as which uh, program to use or what the image should look like? What what the what program, what, what the image should look like? Like say if I, okay. I, I, I need, I, I know I need to make five images. Uh, what like, what path should I go on uh, and how much effort should I put forth to be able to make those five images? Yeah. So uh, for programs, I mean, Canva and Photoshop are basically the go-tos. If you really know what you're doing, you go Photoshop. Uh, I work with a lot of businesses that are trying to run the ad sales. I mean, their entire company sells, right? They're solopreneurs. So a lot of times, uh, you know, Canva is plenty good. You can make, uh, 
you're, you really don't need these complex, crazy art images to get conversions. So um, Canva's is what I, what I use, but you know, if you know Photoshop, might as well do it. Uh, as far as what the image should look like, you know, it depends on obviously what we're actually promoting. So when people do sales, um, that there's still so many variables to it, right? Because even like a hat, uh, I've seen ads sell hats better without the model wearing them, like just the hat by itself and like a black background of some text I've seen perform better. But then when selling clothing like shirt, I've seen that the ads that the person's actually wearing the shirt uh, typically beat the ones than just like a shirt on a white background. There still are so many variables. And that's why I ultimately don't see a course by itself anymore um, for running ads. It's just so business that I, I only work with people where you get the video course to set it up and I talk to them to, to make sure, you know, you know, all of these differences between industries and products that I know about that could never all fit into one course that wasn't a hundred hours, you know, so I just you know, tell them what they need to know for specific business. I, the main strategy that I like to help people with and what I vouch for as the first ad campaign that every B2C business should run is a social media giveaway. And it's not one that you've likely seen before where it's like, like this post and tag three friends, and share this to your story and follow everyone we're following and all the things that people hate to do um, and, and run like as an organic post. That doesn't really work anymore. This only really worked like pre-2017 where all those tags of their friends and like the like and the save, like, like actually like made them think, holy cow, this is like a viral, like make this person's giveaway post go viral. Cause like, look at all these comments. And then they kind of caught on to it that, you know, people tagging multiple friends doesn't necessarily mean this is amazing content. We should push out to everyone. In fact, it's like a promotional giveaway. So it's not really what we should be putting on the explore page. Um, and like, you're never going to see something like that on the explore page nowadays. Like these posts just get canonically. Um, so we run it as an ad campaign, which gives you full control of who you're showing it to. Um, so very important to uh, consider it adds to if you're a local business. Because when you do an organic post, even if you do, like I'm from Colorado, if I do like hashtag Colorado, Denver, hashtag Colorado lifestyle, Denver lifestyle and, you know, Denver family, uh, it's going to show to like 2% more Denver people uh, than it would otherwise had I not even hashtagged it. It, it doesn't really make it go to all Denver people. So if you're really tr trying to attract a local audience, being able to actually put an ads manager only show this to people who live in the codes uh, is often necessary for you to have a chance to get sales because even if they want to come visit you they're in a different state it's probably not going to happen so uh, a lot of organic marketing efforts are really wasted for low businesses that are trying to get customers from them you want to just more use organic marketing to keep up with past customers and then use paid ads to fill in your area um, but that giveaway image like i usually just do a pretty simple one where or, you know, it, it might just be their product giveaway and to win for our third anniversary, something like that um, is how the image works. So I, I can get into more of like how the, the rest of the giveaway process plays out. But I know that's, you know, the answer to your question, at least right there, is just how the image looks. Yeah, yeah definitely. Actually, it makes me feel like a noob uh, back in like 2017 when you used to do all that sharing so you can be entered in for a raffle. Uh, I fell for that one a little bit too hard. Uh, <laughs> well, what do you mean fell for it though? Were you like scammed or, or it's just like you didn't win? I, I was spamming my friends. Oh, so got, I, it. I, got I, it. I would tag all, all my friends like, guys, 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 I get a chance yeah. to get like this like thing that I'm going to throw away in two weeks. Uh, but I would tag all my friends in it. Uh, that marketing tool definitely worked, but it definitely, you don't see that much at all anymore organically. Well, it's, it's not like you can just keep keep tagging them like everyone already tagged the friend that wouldn't kill them for tagging them in a giveaway a few times and now, like the thing they're not like oh here's a qualified lead for you like oh this friend won't kill me and here's my burner account and here's my other account like, like they weren't even like real people that should even be like seeing your guy they're just like the qualification of getting three tags you know uh so yeah it, it didn't often lead to finding the right people it just tricked the algorithm back in the days now, when somebody's starting out, would you recommend, how would you recommend for them to be able to build out that campaign? You sending them to a, a landing page, a website, to a lead form ad, because all of that could, uh, may not be native to their thinking. They like, I have to build a landing page. 
forget that. I don't even talk to my developer. Uh, uh, what's like the normal flow that you would recommend if someone's looking to be able to build out uh, those type of offer campaigns or just really any offer campaign when they first start? Yeah, here. so here's the whole flow. Um, it's not a lead generation campaign. Um, just to clarify for those of you who don't know, when you create an ad, it says what do you want your conversion objection or uh, campaign objective to be and you have 11 options and one of them is lead generation form. And people, people like those because it's the first name and email that pops up with Facebook and Instagram itself. You don't make your own landing page. However, the companies that use that are B2C services for the most part, roofers, uh, uh, exterior painting jobs, um, in, uh, these home services, mostly lighting for home, uh, things like that. So I haven't seen that that type of campaign works well for B2C to see, especially like e-commerce, it just is generally um, geared to find uh, professional services is like who that works really well for. Um, so other than that, just a, a conversions campaign. Um, but let's say we're, um, let's say I'm an artist and, and I've got 12 paintings and I'm ready to see if the world likes them or not. Turn them into prints and I'm going to launch my store for the first time. So I'm in a position where I don't really know if anyone even likes my art. Well, you know, I get comments sometimes, family and friends, but no one really has like bought it yet, right? So now is the time to see, are people actually going to bite the bullet on my $50 canvas wall? And I got these 12, um, let's see if it works. Um, what I would do rather than running individual ads for each 12 ads and spending money to say 25% off this painting today only and just like seeing if you can get sales. Um, more just test people if they at least like my art style in general. So that's part of why I run a giveaway is because we're collecting a lead versus trying to collect a credit card from the ad. And if you're in the stages of testing your product, the amount of money you have to spend to see if could I, could I get to buy something from me is way more money than can I get them to enter to win something for free? Because usually before someone buys, Buy something they need to see the ad seven to ten times and before they enter for a free opt-in for a giveaway uh, like one to two times so it's a lot easier to like collect a bunch of leads um especially if you're a business who could use it more instagram followers more emails more facebook page likes setting up like this way accomplishes everything you're looking to do because when you just run a sale they either buy it or not they're not like eh, i'll follow you they're just like eh, i don't want to buy it scroll on okay they just buy it. so you either get sales or you just literally burn money when you just try to get a sale from the ad. So when you run it as the giveaway, how it looks, it's a very simple single image. Um, they, they always beat the videos too in this case. And you just, it says enter to win, um, $250 shopping spree, the grand debut of my art store. Um, so the caption might be like, hey, for the grand debut art store, I'm choosing one lucky winner to win $250 shopping spree um, to enter just, just do name and email. The reason why it's only name and email for one is because that's completely Facebook ad compliant and you don't run into any issues. Um, if, if you ask for engagement, comment that on a paid ad, um, it oftentimes will uh, get disapproved because they don't like that. Um, so they do name and email, right? Super quick. Um, you know, we, we don't ask for a bunch of steps because if you ask for all these steps, if they're like, eh, I don't want to do one of those, then get a lead. They're like, I'll, I'll give you my email. I'll give you phone number. All right. Okay, I'll tag a friend and okay, I'm gonna share it to my story. Damn it, you know, like then then they're not even gonna do any of it, right? So unless like you just rapidly cut the amount of people, if you have multiple steps necessary for that first entry. So name and email, that's it. Everyone will do it. Next page, it says congrats, you've got one entry. We'll let you know or not in the next couple of weeks if you won. In the meantime, if you'd like to increase your chances to win, then follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. You can like our Facebook page. You can subscribe to our YouTube. You can comment on this YouTube video. You can re review my podcast. You can share it to your your story, right? Because hey, some of them might want to do that. Or hey, you prefer it to a friend, then get more entries. The more friends you get, enter the giveaway, which gives th th this viral share component. I actually ran one giveaway that got like forty nine hundred entries, but six hundred and fifty of them came from just people sharing it with their friends. So it made it so I got six hundred fifty free leads that I didn't have to pay for just because setting it up like this gives it a viral share component. And then to still run a sale at the end, once the giveaway is over, after like two weeks of collecting leads, I say, all right, we've got 5,000 entries. Here's the one person who won. <laughs> For the 4,999 of you who lost, 
Thank you so much for playing as a consolation prize. You can get 25% off my entire art store over the next week to say thank you for entering. And then, hey, if you get sales, if not, then you know that people like my art style. Maybe I still need to put out some more painting. Um, but I can see that a lot of people entered, right? They wanted it for free. I didn't get anyone like really not that many people to bite on the bullet but hey if you get a lot of people then you know you're, you're really on something get a, get your leads not a bunch of sales you know you're you're probably close just keep coming out with more paintings keep at it right but it's a lot more forgiving um than i tried to run it to get them to buy and they didn't buy and now i, I spent five thousand dollars and just burned it and i sold one painting for uh what do i do now <laughs> right is is often what happens for these people trying to test brand new offers and then they find, they come to the realization after one test that it doesn't work and it's time to uh, do something new. Exactly. Yeah. So like if, if you want to even get people to enter at all, then it's like, all right, we, 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 our targeting is either way off or, you know, maybe try to make some art that is, uh, uh, you know, around pop culture. Let's make some Star Wars, you know, <laughs> people because these will sell. Right? I think I think it is smart, which most artists are not willing to play this game. And I don't blame them i get it like when it comes to art it's hard to really make anything like what you want to create that day um same with like music it's hard for artists to be like all right what do the mainstream want without then all of a sudden not sounding like themselves right so it's it's difficult but i think the artists that say hey game of thrones is popular right now let's make a shirt that says i drink and i know things boom we made a million dollars off that shirt rather than one version of a picasso design and seeing if people like it it's a lot quicker path to getting a bunch of sales if you just kind of make what the market is talking about rather than just like whatever you want to make in art. Um, but for a lot of artists, that kind of ruins the entire reason they got into being an artist. So I get it when they don't want to play this game. But um, but yeah, that's how you could adjust your offer to the market. Artists find that I've never had an artist get like no entries. I, I always see artists get tons of entries because um, there's plenty of people who like at least one painting that you're doing um so it usually ends up in a ton of leads and then the sales are, are hit or miss but it at least just kind of you know let's just keep coming out with some more designs and now that these people follow you every they've given you their email right they're, they're on facebook they're on instagram they're on email maybe they love your art but they don't have any blank wall space right now but they follow you so in a year later now all of a sudden you came out with a new art piece looks perfect would be perfect for their bathroom they've been looking for a piece for their now you got them so a lot of artists too you can't expect people to just like buy it right away there's plenty of people that will follow you for years before they buy something so um you know audience accumulation through this giveaway model is is very beneficial for that reason too because when you just say buy this now it's like hopefully you got a blank spot on the wall and you know it's a good time for you financially and and everything otherwise you're just not gonna get the sale yeah, that's one thing that uh, I noticed a lot of people aren't aware of, just the, the wide spectrum of people who interact with your ads. Somebody could be ready to buy right now, uh, where a lot of them may be ready to buy six months or a year or two years down, down the line. Uh, it's where if you don't have some type of uh, communication with them after that process, uh, uh, you're not optimizing your leads or you're not optimizing your advertising as best as you can. To add a question to that, this is probably one of my most hated questions. Uh, what would you recommend for somebody who's just starting out for advertising spend? Yeah, um, so it, it's like a hated question because there's so much gray space to it, right? Uh, with my particular giveaway model, I basically say $10 per ad set, um, however many ads you do. It's like the simplest answer, right? Um, when people are like promoting and posting stuff, like there, there's plenty of... Um, answers that you can give but to understand this conceptually i would say that when you spend ten dollars a day uh facebook and instagram will say How, what's the best way we can spend this ten dollars a day so they're actually really picky with who they show it to if you come right out of the game say fifty dollars they're gonna say all right well we got 50 bucks so you know some of these people that were like unsure of um hey we, we got to spend the 50 bucks show it to them too so Usually, if you're not able to get the ad results with a smaller budget, um, going to the bigger budget doesn't fix it. So that's why I actually do vouch for you know ten dollars per ad set, just as kind of like unanimous rule across the board with a whatever campaign run. Like at a minimum, you, you could definitely say like you know twenty five is fine. 
fine as well, but I still like 10 day and like let them warm up for two days because if that's not getting results, it's hard for this level to actually get you results. If, if you can't get it at the $10 per day um, to, to show some traction, uh, the, the cranking up to $50 a day is not a problem. Yeah, actually, I think that's a, a one of the bigger misconceptions about the 50 conversions a week that people think, oh, if I just like 3x my spend, I'm going to get 50 and that's going to go, my cost per lead is going to go down. <laughs> Rarely I've seen that as that the, the case. Yeah, you're just opening up where you're like, all right, some more money, so find some more people. And obviously those people are going to be like, he's mostly master, match your criteria. You know, when you're running a small budget, they're like, all right, these all check out because we had the whole day to wait for them to show up to spend our 10 bucks. So if you just kind of think about it like that, then you'll know uh, more with, with your ads as you see them rather than being like, I got to ask an expert, like how much per day, right? Like you're just going to get an ant, like if they say, Day 15 <laughs> like that wouldn't be there's no answer that exists you just have to understand this stuff concept yeah i just know if uh, uh you ask any experts how much that you can spend that expert is probably just giving you a number off the top of their head and ten dollars sounds like a good place to start where if they're suggesting something that is uh say two three four five hundred dollars a day uh, and you've never done ads before uh, i think you're more likely to get pissed than uh than, than thankful at them Absolutely. I mean, it, after like 20 to 30 bucks, there's 20 to 30 bucks of ad spend. I'm already tweaked off. Usually like there's already patterns starting to plot of cases. Um, it can take a little bit more than that. Where like uh, a pattern plays out to the point that you're like completely turning off an ad. Um, but, but a lot of you when you do that small spend then you realize like, Oh, we have a broken link. You know, like it, it's better to just get slow for the sake of, um, you know, you making sure everything's actually set up properly, technically, and rather than, you know, send it like all of a sudden, all these people just get run to your website and then you get, you know, broken link messages or whatever. Like it, it you, you just want to let them warm up at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, uh, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I guess I know we are speaking about Facebook, uh, I use the word meta. I don't know if I should use the word meta. I kind of feel like an idiot saying meta instead of Facebook. Uh, do you have any opinions about where pe should people still be starting on Facebook now? Uh, or do you recommend TikTok for anybody uh, on their first go around? For paid ads. Uh, so talking Facebook and sugar, like, like you know, when I say Facebook again or meta, uh, which they probably would like us to switch to. Short word, I like it. Uh, um, you know, and it hopefully more uh, directly encompasses Facebook and Instagram. Because every time I say Facebook ads, they're like, yeah, but I'm on Instagram. I'm like, all right, Instagram ads. They're like, well, what about Facebook? Like, same thing. So, um, yeah, we'll say meta ads. Let's go ahead and switch that right now. Meta ads versus TikTok ads. This is more down to your type of product. If you mm. feel like your product can be sold to an audience of people under 25, um, and I know there's like plenty of, there's, there's a lot of people that are over 30 and everything that are on now. There's plenty of that. Definitely. The generation that is still obsessed with it though, and like not get off of it is still under 25. So you're still going to like, it, you know, it's still going to be more geared toward. And the thing you got to know, the main difference between Instagram and TikTok, when people go on TikTok, they are to be entertained and they're actually slower moving than they are on Instagram. Like they are more to watch a three to 10 minute video on TikTok than they are on Instagram. Because on Instagram, they're like, all right, let me check this in between, you know, whatever. Like I'm waiting in line for my coffee. You don't pull up TikTok when you're waiting in line for your coffee. You're like, let me check Instagram. All right, uh, no DMs and five posts. All right, got it. There's my coffee. Like you, it's a lot of people quick check it throughout the day. It's not like the, the end of the day, you know, do I want a Netflix or Instagram? But people actually ask us, do I want a Netflix or TikTok, right? Like I could probably watch four hours of TikTok, easy watch four hours of Netflix in a lot of uh, times, actually. Um, it, it, the feed is really, really good at being super, but it's also like pure entertainment, which makes it for businesses to get over there. So like for me, selling like the um, consulting services, I don't even want to mess around with it. Like I've seen enough other people in my space Space, try it and then not be running them anymore. I'm sure there's some way to do it. Um, but the problem with it is 
you have to innovate something purely from scratch. Like it would be maybe like, oh, I made some new ch challenge viral on TikTok, like not in your control, right? Like there's definitely these crazy marketing campaigns that have the potential to go completely viral on TikTok. But it's not nearly as much in control as like when I teach people to run a giveaway. It's like very cut and dry. Put the image here. Like here's your three uh, formats. Here's the four formats for cap. Here's the exact format for the email. Um, it's something that I can give a business owner that has no marketing experience or even graphic design experience and still get the results. For me to like suggest to, like, are you good on camera um, or are you pretty ming and pretty creative with editing? Are you adjusted to TikTok? Have you been on here long enough to understand kind of ads actually work and what a general TikTok um, um, should be and what the feeling of the platform is and just your mindset of being on the app, how you were just purely trying to get entertained right now. if you have like so s examples of products that have done really well on tiktok like the sunset lamps um that just shine a really cool sunset light on your room and you can change the colors on it because a lot of these kids you know living at home with their parents it's like their room is their space and it's just selling products to improve their room and thus also improve their ability to make tiktoks because now they have a cool light in the background you know that those did really well um, like the LED strip lighting around the room, it's super well on there. I don't think that would do well on Instagram at all, but that would do very well on TikTok. Um, so there's certain product differences where um, there would be some products that you're like, huh, I don't know which one. But I, on TikTok in general, it requires a lot more create creative process. Um, it's a lot harder mm -hmm. for me to recommend like everyone do. Um, if you're really creative, if you have a, a brilliant idea for it, if you really think this. Um, a good platform for your product. Uh, you can maybe get cheaper um, cost per impression on TikTok because way less people have figured it out, right? So, you know, less competition over there. Um, but I mean, again, you're making a TikTok. You're not making a single image ad that just says 25% on it. You're going to have to make some kind of video and it can't feel like a professional. It has to feel like an organic video that is still like professional like trust. And it's just, a lot of variables on it, and that's why I don't think you're going to see a lot of TikTok ads courses out there uh, that aren't really bad, at least. I haven't even seen one because I don't think anyone has like, realized, like, unless you're making TikTok ads for candles, TikTok ads for uh, yoga products, like, unless it's specific, uh, it would be very hard for someone to make a course that would teach how to run ads for empathy because the creative is, you know, most of what you're doing here. Yeah, to add to that, I've actually had uh, on TikTok terrible luck, and I call it branded content. So typical content you'll see like on Instagram, they flop on uh, on TikTok. Uh, the influencer like selfie style, just a very basic. I never would have guessed, but those do way better than branded, which completely shocked me. And it, like, it's a whole new learning curve on that platform. So you doing a just front facing camera talking to the camera is what you're saying mm -hmm. it's like a, a influencer like a little bit of a, a, a whatever is trending like there may be a particular scene that's trending and the person's using that scene to help sell the product uh, but it's like a normal tiktok influencer video that you see where they're endorsing the product but every time that i've done a ad that works well on facebook i'm like this has to do good on uh, on tiktok it always flops. It, it it would be very hard to have a piece of create very well on all three. I mean, obviously to be run as an Instagram real ad, but even there's something about like um, on TikTok, like people are like, oh, ad, go away. Like their, their tolerance for sold to on TikTok is very low. Even though I told you their attention watching content is higher, um, their attention, they're like, this is the end of my day. I'm watching Netflix. If I can, if I can skip the ad, I'm going to do it immediately. Um, that's like, you really got to blend in over there. On Instagram, they're just like so used to the ads at this point. that are like, oh, it's a company advertising. I'll hear them out. Like a little bit more like uh, sl they're slower down with the ads. So, I mean, it, it's it's good, right? Like, but that's why uh, multiple channel uh, platform strategy is the only like winning strategy for any e-commerce business doing like over 10k a month consistently or or most businesses for that matter will likely have a few platforms 
uh, down and in their repertoire. So it's just kind of good to know what the differences are. And it's, it's hard to really figure that out without um, doing some posts on them and then also being a consumer on them for a while. And that that's the biggest trap I think, you know, anyone online marketing nowadays faces is, uh, oh, what, what reel should I do? I don't know. Let me see what's trending and vibe viral right now and uh i'll pay attention to what i'm doing well you know like i i i have like adhd hardcore as do like a lot of entrepreneurs so i'm just like on tiktok like oh yeah looking for viral trends right now better you know <laughs> not not get caught up in looking at viral trends too long it's kind of hard to to do <laughs> yeah, yeah i uh uh uh, I always tell myself when I'm scrolling deep in the abyss that I'm actually working right now. Uh, anyways, yeah, this uh, side t going through all those uh, songs uh, can be a, a big waste of uh, uh, effort. But uh, yeah, we're, dude, really, really interesting. Actually, you kind of gave me a little epiphany there too that uh, maybe TikTok is not the best place for ads right now because people uh, uh, aren't just ready for it. Uh, but as the platform matures, I imagine that there's going to be a slowly gradual where people are more likely to interact with ads uh, like they've been on Instagram. What, Instagram has been around for, what, eight, nine years now? So, longer. Something uh, longer than that? 12. Holy shit. Excuse my language. Uh, yeah, so we I'll just may be at a point. Even. <laughs> We may be at a point where branded isn't going to work just because the uh, uh, the platform is immature enough. There's probably going to be a come a time where uh, people on TikTok are going to interact with ads. Uh, it may just not be predominantly right now. And it's uh, it sounds like uh, if you're looking to get your company on these uh, social platforms, paid social platforms, that yeah, uh, Facebook Meta is a uh, more of a go to tried and true place uh, to be able to test your product out. Instagram's a lot easier to work if you don't have a marketing background, technical background, a content creation background, sales background. All of these things are a lot more permissible to uh, be at. On Instagram, I won't say bad because they're very important, but you can be more okay at them. But to do well on TikTok, the platform is made based off of the post flops or goes viral. There's not really much in um, e even the fall, like people with tons of fall. Followers. Like there's more of an in between for people with followers because then they're gonna have that base layer of people who see it, even if it's not a viral post. Um, but even then, TikTok is like gonna put it very low on their feed, like on their friends' feed of like I just want to see uh, posts from people I follow right now. It still is in order of, of like the most posts in order. So like it, it, when it flops over there, it really flops. Um, but and it, there's just a really big gap. So unless you can like cross that gap times. Even if you cross it a couple times, like you, I went viral twice on my personal page in 2020, and I gained 17,000 followers of it. And nowadays, as I see people go viral, they don't gain nearly as much. That, that's kind of why um, being early platforms is good. Like the one thing that's different is that people are in a follower frenzy because they're like, they follow people. So like, I like, like your post, I, I might as well follow you too. It's like, they just almost like hit the follow button with the light when the app is new. Um, but that account like got screwed because, because a, my two viral posts had nothing to do with social media marketing. It was me just doing a trend. So now when I post like, oh, that, no. uh, anything business, it just dies immediately. So I started in this one. Um, but the cool thing with TikTok is like, if you post an amazing post with zero followers, you still have a solid chance to go viral. But like if, if it honestly deserves to go viral, you have like zero followers, it will probably like TikTok will still probably pick it up. On Instagram, probably not going to get picked up unless you have enough followers to acknowledge it. So th that is the one thing that it's harder to get started on it. Um, but that's why I really like doing things like running the giveaway because we'll get you know, as little as 500 followers if they don't want to spend that much. Uh, I've seen people, people get you know, seven or 8,000 um, from running this giveaway model just because it's an entry step. And now you don't have to content to get people to follow you where they're like wow that reel was so amazing i gotta follow it's hard to make reels that make people be like i gotta follow them even my ones that like my successful reel are like thirteen thousand views or something probably like three followers right like so to like be like oh we're gonna gain a thousand followers from reels like really really difficult um for for businesses right like for, for 
influencers to look a certain way, maybe it's not that hard for you to get a thousand followers from a few posts. But otherwise, if you're a business trying to make reels about your product and then for people to be like, you know what, like they have four followers, I'm going to be number five. It's really hard to get started over there with very little followers. So that's why I always recommend run this type of giveaway at the beginning because you can have zero followers to begin with and end with 500 to 1,000. And the only people who followed you are your exact target market. So like if you're local, they all live right by. Now have a thousand followers who live in your town rather than a thousand followers who live throughout the world, right? Uh, you have people that enter to win a giveaway based on, hey, I want their not cool post, cool real idea. I like how you, you know, did that dance uh, with your product in front of you. That was cool. It didn't follow you on that reason. I want to win your product. I want to own your product. I'll follow you. So it also gets it really started with the, the right people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big thing. Oh, man, we can do another po podcast and just uh, qualified people who follow you. Because uh, that that is very real. Also, a little. Uh, so I do with, with TikTok ads. I have a client where we've been doing um, paying for TikTok followers. It's like 20 cents for a new follower. Every organic post that they do is only 200 views. That does not matter at all. It's it, it, uh, paying for views or paying for followers. Like uh, if you're doing an acquisition campaign or like a giveaway campaign, those are more qualified. Uh, but I would steer clear of uh, paying for followers. Uh, from my experience, that just never helps out organically in the long run. They're too far away from what the end goal you want them to do. So. So, um, yeah, they're, they're very likely not going to be people who would also buy because TikTok is just trying to get you followers at the cheapest cost because that's what that is set up to do. So they just are like, all right, all right well, you know, these people in India really like your stuff and it's just the conversion rate makes it a little cheaper to advertise out there. So we'll, we'll show your ad out there is like literally what will happen. Like for me in the office space, India has a lot of avid entrepreneurs that like just love on entrepreneurship out there so like whenever i promote if i would run it just automatic world like the whole thing is going to india for sure because they love entrepreneurship and then they're just you know not as expensive to advertise to as um america or something yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man that's uh that, that that speaks a lot of truth <laughs> uh you can get a lot of uh people in other countries comment on your stuff if you don't control that targeting Cool, man. Well, that that sounds great. Now we're going to a part where talking about creative. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give you. Hopefully, you are a caffeine addict like I am, uh, and yeah. three different video ads. Uh, and I want you to rate them on which one you think is going to get the best results for acquisition. Uh, and hopefully, these are brands that you are familiar with too. Whoa. How smooth is Pete's medium roast? All right, let's go. How smooth is Pete's medium roast? So smooth every time. I'm not going to say my opinion, uh, but I am a frequent <laughs> okay. at, at Pete's. Uh, by the way, do they, do they they have pizza over? You're in Denver, right? Yeah. Or you're in Colorado? Or is it bad to say Denver? Or are you actually in Denver? No, yeah, I'm 20 minutes south of Denver, so Castle Rock. Not a lot of people know about it, though. So. Mm, yeah, yeah. I just say I'm in San Francisco, and I'm not. Uh, all right. So we got <laughs> the second one, which, which is uh, uh, Starbucks. All right, and that one purposely had no sound. So if you're listening on audio only, oops. Uh, and then the last one we have is the coffee bean. Yeah, and sound with that hmm? one, did that one? There was no sound. Have sound the actual ad? No, no sound. Okay. Uh, maybe I should have said that prior, but yeah, that that one had no sound. And if you want to see uh, see one again, just for uh, to get context. Uh, totally cool. And last one is what is this? Coffee tea and leaf. 
coffee bean and tea leaf. Oops. Let me throw that, start that over again. No sound. Anything going on in the bottom right of that ad? Uh, no, we, we can play it again. I just have your uh, video over it. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't look like there is anything. Well, which one is going to get the best cost per acquisition is probably the Starbucks one because there's they're going to be able to run it to an audience of people who are interested in Starbucks because Starbucks is big enough. Their own audience uh, of people already interested, they just run it directly to and they, they already have the brand recognition. And um, yeah, the ad was, was just very simple. It was just kind of a reminder of, remember that you can buy coffee from us and you're here. Um, the other first one was like had a, a high cringe factor, which actually does you lead people to to watch it to the end. They're like, what is going on right now? The other I wanted to buy it after was definitely um, hard to say. I mean, that's so smooth. It was just kind of, kind of cringe uh, how it sounded and the ad didn't great. Um, but it was actually talking about a feature for the coffee, like of how smooth it is. And, um, you know, really just trying to uh, at least own, own some kind of positioning that this very smooth coffee. The Starbucks one didn't do anything apart from just like show coffee, um, you know, flashing forth between two different brews. Uh, one of them was a black coffee. The other one had cream in it. So whether you like black coffee and that image makes you salivate or you look at a coffee with cream in it and that makes you salivate like it did for me. Now I need coffee. Um, that would do better because it made me salivate. So because the ad's goal is me to like purchase the food or drink item in the spot, um, unless I have the emotion of um, I want to drink that right now, um, it would be very, very hard for me to buy it right now. Just like, I'll consider that someday, right? Like, But the Starbucks one made me like, I need a coffee right now. Like, now that I saw that, the cream swirling in that coffee, I'm like, I need some French vanilla in my life. But the first one with that Pete's coffee, like I think it will get really good watch time because people will be like, wow, that was cringe, but I had to watch the whole, whole thing. Um, so it will probably get good get ad uh, impression co or like the, yeah, the cost per thousand impression will probably be good on that one because everyone's watching it to the end and it's uh, Facebook and Instagram usually tend to like lighter blue colors that it uses. Um, it, these are being on Facebook and Instagram, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, we cool. uh, we stole them from Facebook Ad Library. Okay, sweet. Uh, so the the first one I like because it like tries to position the coffee in some way that it's like smoother than the other coffee that you have at home, right? Like there's actually some kind of uh, market to it. I don't know if I see it getting. Um. Yeah, I mean, if they run it to their past customers, so it'll probably do fine, right? It doesn't even matter what the ad says. If they're running the past customer, are likely to buy. Um, the, both, both the first two almost both serve brand awareness ads where it's not like a strong call to action of like, get this much coffee for this deal or whatever. They're kind of just reminding people that they exist. So it might be a retargeting campaign and not hold ad campaign, which would also factor into my answer of if it's going to work or not. And then the third one, that one had the best video by far. It was really easy to watch, but it didn't say anything. Like it wasn't clear what was going on, um, like where do I go, how do I take action? Um, it just had the company's brand at the bottom left. So if you read that, cool. I mean, you see what brand it is just from like who's running the ad. Um, I don't know what the accompany, accompanying cat with it is, but it didn't make me salivate and like actually want coffee right now. It was like, oh, those beans look cool. That like really nice um, HD camera shots of the beans coming in and everything, but they didn't get that like, it's pouring with the steam coming out and then you add the cream to it. Mm. And I just want to see the cream in there. And that's, that's what makes me like, I need coffee right now. So I don't really have that much of a uh, emotional appeal in it. And then the call to action was not clear. So I don't, I don't think the third one would work, even though it almost had the most potential with uh, uh, the, the raw video file that they had was really 
pretty good. And I think uh, with maybe a couple more shots added in there um, but really i bet the starbucks one was the one that probably won on the cost per acquisition just because it was uh, real simple and uh, um you know they're just past customers at this point <laughs> yeah if you haven't heard of start heard of starbucks uh you have been living underneath a rock and you have no taste in coffee or you just you just do not like coffee uh actually i'll, I'll take that back if you like starbucks this is going to throw a little shade uh, you actually do not like coffee, uh, but that's a different that's discussion. I, you're saying it. I got you. No, I put enough cream. Really matter, but um, yeah, it's I, I know when you have black coffee there versus someone tell the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you uh, but if you do pour enough cream, it all evens out uh, eventually. Uh, one uh -huh. of the things I thought was uh -huh. interesting about the pizza. Uh, ad and I actually I hate these commercials. Do you ever see the ones where they say now free 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 for free 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 throughout the entire the, the out the entire commercial? I hate those. I absolutely hate them. I've never. Ah, they'll they'll go through a commercial and they'll the, all they'll say is uh, free 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 or they'll they'll, they'll continue it because they just want to get one thing in your head that whatever they're selling is free. Uh, I hate that. Uh, but I think it works. I don't know. Um, but I, I was tied in between the Starbucks and the Pete's with you as well. Like uh, uh, Starbucks brand is so strong uh, that you all you need to be able to do is show a product and people will buy it from them. But it, it activated my sense of wanted coffee um, th that the other one's not. So it's it accomplished that very basic fundamental thing of does the ad make them want the product, you know, or are we just showing them that hey we're coffee you know <laughs> did we make coffee and show them that we're coffee and that you can buy from us right now you know were they all accomplished cool awesome awesome man look great stuff and uh if people when they're looking to be able to grow uh their facebook ads or their uh their meta ads uh or just looking to be able to grow their knowledge just in general where can they be able to find out more Derek? yes so the best way just follow me on instagram at social bamboo underscore and then check out the bio um and there you'll find uh whatever i got going on at the time so if you catch this interview in the future if you're doing something else that's my freebie but you can get my free um it's called instagram ads course in there i might title it meta ads course though um but yeah that's a free course and that will, will show you the exact flow of the ads that i recommend of you know does it go to the ad to the page and then the landing page where does it go after and like just the exact flow is all illustrated throughout that course explained um, what these images should be like, like the targeting um, all the, the basic setup is covered in this getting started um, it's cool too because because it's free you can kind of see what it would take so if you're also curious like uh, you, you know how much do I need to know how much work is this going to be um, it's a very um, easy ad campaign to run compared to the other ones that you could do not compared to one that won't work though so like yes boot post much easier it's not going to work though this is the easiest campaign that i can also say gives you a very high chance to be pro and gain a lot of fall grab that from my bio um otherwise shoot me a dm too whatever you thought about and feedback is always appreciated awesome well hey derek man thank you so much for your time i have definitely learned it and anybody who's listening derek definitely knows his stuff especially about the ad inventory he was saying some things that uh it took me a couple of years to be able, even to be even aware of uh so great stuff on your part derek man thank you so much for your time and uh look forward to chatting later absolutely man we're about to record uh my interview on the social bamboo podcast so if you guys want to continue the conversation We'll, we'll link that next one below and you can uh, the surround here and I'll be asking him the questions.